Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with O Line Security, and we are back with another Cert Master Lab for Security Plus 701. Today, we're going to be going over security baselines. Pretty straightforward lab here. It's all about security baselines. If you're not familiar with security baselines, they are templates, security templates that we can use to improve our attack surface. It'll make more sense if we jump right into it. So let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So they want us to go to to about two to three different websites, right? I already have one of them open. This one right here is for SANS.org. If you're not familiar with SANS, it's a well-known organization that creates a bunch of security baselines for organizations and companies to use and follow. So here's SANS website, all right? And that's the link that was provided here. Here are some of the templates that they create. They create acceptable use policies. If you don't have one for your organization, you can come here and just grab this one and start implementing some of it at your organization. Antivirus guidelines, they're providing security templates, guidelines, suggestions, standards, policies that you can implement in your current organization right now, right, to help improve your security posture. Are you gonna take it straight out the box? No, right, there are gonna be some things out of these policies that you have to tailor. So let's look at one, let's go to network security. We're gonna filter all the policies for network security policies. And then we're gonna take a look at the remote access policy. If we just look at the PDF for the remote access policy, you see, right, this is a high level overview of what this policy is supposed to be doing. All right, this is supposed to be providing a way for computer users and support staff alike to share screens, access work computers from home and vice versa, right? This is a secure way to do it, right? Here's the policy, right? That you would be disseminating throughout your entire, entire organization or whoever this policy needs to comply with. Right, here's the policy compliance, right? Non-compliance. An employee found to have violated this policy may be subject to dis disciplinary actions up to and including termination of employment. This is part of your policy compliance, right? Obviously, you're gonna have to define rules for them to abide by, right? Here we go, all remote, remote access to the systems that allow communication to the resource from the internet or external partner systems must require multi-factor authentication. This is a rule that you can implement at your current company, multi-factor authentication for all remote access. If you don't have a security baseline, if you don't have a template that is addressing remote access tool policy, you can come to something like SANS to get this template and use it. It says, which of the following are headings or section titles in the security policy document for the SANS organization? All right, let's take a look. We see overview. Overview is one. Whoops. Overview is one, purpose is one. We see purpose right there. I'm gonna to try to put this on the other screen while I select it. Purpose is one, scope is one, policy is one. Let me scroll down a bit and I'll share this again. Policy compliance is one and revision history is one. So we see revision history right here. We see policy compliance right there. We can see policy, scope, purpose, and overview, right? So those are all the sections right there. Let's see if we got that right. And we did. We're gonna close this. We're gonna go back out of this remote access tool and we're gonna go and take a look at server security. It's just a different policy, right? Doing the same thing. We're gonna go over to server security, just a different policy doing the same thing, right? It's trying to give you rules and regulations to help improve your security posture. Right, so server security policy. If we open this PDF up, same thing. This is an overview. This is a template that you can use. This is a baseline for your server security. If you don't have server security policies, here's something that you can implement at your current organization to help improve the security and the attack surface of your servers. Okay, I'm gonna move this back over. And same thing. So review the major sections of this policy. The server security policy references two other policies related to this policy document. What are those? Well, if we scroll down a bit, we can see them, right? It's talking about the demilitarized zone, right? And audit policy, the DMZ and audit policy. Score that. Sweet. So we can close that out and we can go over to the next section to look at some more security templates this one is going to be from another organization called sis cis this is just as big as an organization as sand all right they both provide security templates policy that we can use to ensure that our security posture is up is is up to standard all right so over here let's look at the sis benchmark 
we're going to look at Microsoft Windows servers. If we can find it, we got to scroll down a bit. It's a bunch of different services, a bunch of different applications here. We saw a SQL application, MariaDB. We see Microsoft 365, Kubernetes. We used Docker in the previous and one of the previous labs. All of these tools here, you want to make sure that you have some type of security policy around your tools. You want to make sure you have some type of security template around your tool that's helping you improve their security infrastructure. Now we're going to look at Microsoft Windows Server, right? You could download this benchmark right here and read over how to, you know, properly make sure that your your, your Windows servers are being tracked, they're being monitored, the, the, the vulnerability scans are being conducted, the, the remediation is being conducted in a timely manner. This is a good resource. SIS is actually used nationwide to measure their benchmarks, to measure that their systems and network and endpoints are being protected and secure according to SIS. All right, question. The Microsoft Windows Server benchmarks are available for a wide range of versions of this OS. Which of the following are included? Um, let's see what we have. Do we have 2022? I see 2022. Do we have 2016? We see 2016. Do I see 2003? That's there. 2008? That's there. 2019? That is there. They are all there. Right? And all I simply did was just control find for each of them. 2022 is there. 2016 is there. 2003 is there. 2008 is there. And 2019 is also there. Sweet. says use the back buttons for your browser to return to the sys benchmarks since benchmarks are available for which of the following all right let's check sys benchmarks are available for which of the following let's see let's look for pf sense that's there apple if i spell it right that's there nginx that's there zoom that's there docker i'd be surprised if docker isn't there that's there and amazon web services that is there all right, all of them are here. <clears throat> all right, since sys, bench, sys benchmarks are pretty, pretty, pretty dope. We use this to, to, to securely configure our applications, our endpoints, our services, our products, right? Securely configure PFSense. How do you know you have your PFSense firewall configured to good standards? Your Apple iOS devices, your Nginx servers, your Zoom applications, your Docker, your Amazon Web Services. How do you know that they are configured according to good standards? That is what we would use Sys Benchmark to help us with, right? It's just an value. Well, it's more than just, right? It's it's definitely global, globally recognized best practices, right? Sys is definitely go globally recognized best practices. Which of the following is not a category of security policy templates from SANS? Um, I don't have the website up anymore. Let's see. Okay, SANS has application security. They have incident handling. I don't see IoT and I see retired. So I'm gonna go with all of them except for IoT. Oh, which of the followings is not? So that's gonna be IoT. Which of the following is a category of bench benchmark from SIS? Which of the following is a category? Let's open that back up. Category, we can see that right here, DevSecOps tools, right? DevSecOps tools, that's one of the categories from SIS. The rest of these are now the category up top. Sweet. Once a security template baseline or benchmark has been obtained from a third party, what tasks are your, are your responsibility? All right, we want to tailor it to our, to our system functions and scope to our business objectives. All right, we want to tailor it to our system functions and scope to our business objectives. Network security baselines describe a set of minimum security controls and configurations for a network. They provide a starting point for the hardening process. This is true. All right, this is just a starting point. This is not the end all be all. Sys benchmarks can be applied directly to production systems. No, 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 no. Whoa, I meant false, right? False. You cannot apply those directly to 
production system, right? You need to test the benchmarks out in a development environment, then take it to staging and then maybe production, right? You may have other lower or non-prod environments, but you should not put this, these benchmarks into production right away. You could break something. All right, that's it, y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed that section. It was pretty straightforward. I will see you all in the next video. Peace.